Hi friends, it's Terry Gaines, independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up. In this video tutorial, I'm going to share a new fun fold card created with the Frosted Forest Bundle. This bundle is the stamp set, the dies, and the mask, all bundled together for 10% savings, or you can purchase them separately. They're part of the new online exclusive products, which were introduced on July 3rd. If you are interested, I do have a four page PDF on my blog that you can download that shows you all the new product that became available on July 3rd, including this bundle. It has the stamp set with eight images. Four of the images can be cut out with the dies along with these additional dies, 10 dies altogether. And then you have six masks. As I mentioned, you can purchase these individual. These masks, three of them are labeled one, two, three. They're for this tree. And then three of them are labeled A, B, C, and they are for these two trees. You have two trees on this mask or the, this set of masks. What I'm going to do is color in these two trees before I start the fun fold project and I'm going to use the mask. I did use some work ahead of time. I already have these two trees stamped and I cut them out with the dies. I use the Memento ink for these. I'm gonna start out by coloring in this tree and I'm only going to use two of the mask. I'm gonna use the one that's labeled number one. That's going to be coloring in the, the tree trunk and the branches. Then I'm going to use the number two. I'm not gonna do the third one. I'm gonna show you if you do not stamp the image and just use the mask, this is what you're going to get. That third one is this little added detail. I'm gonna do something different on my project. So what I'm gonna do is set this down. And as I mentioned, I'm going to use this one first. I'm going to use early espresso for the ink color and I'm going to color it in with the blends. I'm going to use the, or the blending brush, I mean. I'm gonna use the blending brush to transfer from the ink pad to the project. So I'm gonna start out by getting some ink on here. So I'm gonna rotate in both directions, get some ink on here. I'm not taping that this down. You could if you want. I've been making a few of these. I'm comfortable just setting it down here. I'm going to line it up to get these images to line up. So um, I'm gonna try moving the camera a little bit closer just so you can see what I'm doing here. I have this mask just revealing the image that is the tree trunk and the branches as close as I can get. My finger is holding this green part or the this part of the tree and the mask. I have ink on here already. I'm going to place it here to get some of it off so I can get a softer color. Early Espresso is the color I'm using. It is a dark brown and I don't want it that too dark. So then I'm gonna come back up here, get some of that ink back on the brush and just do that, do a soft rotation to color in that portion of the image. So I'm gonna bring that up so I have that done. When I'm done using these, I take it to the sink and rinse it off, and then I just let them air dry. So I'm gonna set that aside, I'll clean that later. I'm done with this color. I'm gonna move on to Old Olive for the rest of this. I already mentioned I'm just going to use this one next. What I'm going to do is set this down, and now you can maybe you can see I'm covering up the ink that I've already put on the project in this mask. So I'm covering that up and then everything else falls into place. I'm gonna hold my hand. Well, first of all, what I need to do is get some ink on here. So I'm gonna get some ink on a new blending brush. I have this one dedicated to my greens and I'm going to cover or hold on to this. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna start here because if I go right to the paper, I'm gonna get a dark glob. I don't want a dark glob. I'm gonna get the dark glob on the mask. Then I can softly go in here and get more of a soft fill in and not a dark spot. I can go back up here and grab that ink and keep on working on that. So you can put this as dark as you want. I'm gonna stop here. I'm gonna show you what I've got so far. So this is what I have so far. And as I mentioned, 
this next mask is going to put those spots in. I don't want to do that, but I do want to add some texture to this. So I am going to cover this up again, and I'm going to bring a rubber band cluster. I learned about this my very first convention 28 years ago. It's 30 rubber bands clustered together like a pom-pom. You cut the ends and you can use, you can dab that into your ink pad. So I'm gonna hold these together, dab them into my ink pad, and then go onto this mask. And I'm going to get a unique look that is going to add some texture to the trees. So you can see how that made a difference. I just love how that turned out. I'll bring this one back in or bring this one. This is how it would have looked, a little bit lighter in color, but you can see the difference. I like how that adds just the right amount of depth and texture. Again, when you're done working with this or wanna change colors, then you rinse that and let it dry. Now I'm going to color this one in. So we are going to grab the other set of masks and I'm gonna start out with the one that says A. I'm gonna set this down. I'm gonna get some more ink on here. I'm gonna just put it, rotate it in both directions, circular fashion. I'm going to cover this. And the first one is fairly easy because you're really lining up your stamped image to see it in the openings here. But you gotta kind of look at all points and I think I'm good. So I'm just gonna hold this down. I'm gonna put the ink here first and then color this in. I am also going to put the rubber band cluster in this larger opening. I'm going to use um, this mask and the next one. I'm not gonna do all three of them, but I'm also gonna take this and just put this in this opening, just add a little bit more texture and so that's what I have so far. I'm not gonna stop here because I really don't have the trunk defined. The second mask will kind of define some of that tree trunk. So I'm gonna set this down. You could have marked these and know where to put this. I am just moving this. So it's really covering up what I've already put on for ink. So you can see it's, Maybe you can see above above the first openings are what I've added with the first mask. This mask is lining up just over that. I'm going to take this. Now I, I'm okay that this is really dark, so I'm not gonna blot it off. I'm just gonna go in here and get this darker. I want this to be darker than the first time. So I'm just going to go in here and Go in a circular motion and I gotta get a little bit more down here. And I think I'm good with that. Now when I take this off, I really like how this tree filled in for color, okay? So we're gonna be good with that. I'm gonna set those masks aside. We're done with the ink. We're done with their blending brushes. I'm actually even gonna take this grid paper out because I think it's easier to see on this surface for the rest of the project here. All right, so we are done with this, but doesn't that turn out really pretty? So now what we're going to do is talk about the fun fold. I have the measurements here. I will have a PDF on my blog that you can download that has the measurements, the supplies, and a link to this video so you can rewatch it when you want to. I'm going to bring in my simply scoring tool and before I do that let's talk about all the items we need for our project. We have our decorative images and I actually have a second tree. I'm going to assemble this card first. So we have two trees and then I have the sentiment that's in the stamp set, one of the sentiments. There are some really nice sentiments in the stamp set. I have the birthday one, I, I stamped that and I cut it out with one of the dies from the Stylish Shape Banners dies. So I cut it out with, I 
cut it out with that and then I cut the edge so I just have that then we have the sentiment layer now I decided to use uh let me I'm going to go from the bottom up so the sentiment layer this is the max size two and a quarter by five and a quarter I chose to make it a decorative inside sentiment layer so I used one of the dies the second largest die in the nested essential dies so decorative images sentiment layer a right panel and a left panel I'm using designer series paper and this is the country woods designer series paper it has 12 sheets in the packet they're 12 by 12 in size you get two each of the six double-sided prints and in this packet i am using this print right here so we have a three quarters by five and a quarter and a three inch by five and a quarter then we have three main panel layers the first one is two and three quarters by five and a half then we have one that's two and a half by four and a quarter then we have one that is two and an eighth by five and an eighth so we have those here now we're up to the card base now i'm going to bring in the simply scoring tool this card base oh i should move the camera up a little bit maybe it was okay down there i hope everything was on the camera forgot that i moved it down so we have a card base and i already have this scored so i'm just going to rescore it to show you that it's eight and a half by five and a half it is scored at four and a quarter at five and a quarter and at six and three quarters now what you're going to do is this card we're going to fold it in half so it's your card base size here and so we folded it in half the score lines are on the top the fold is on the left now we have that fold we're going to fold the next fold over and i'm going to have you take your bone folder and crease this so this is going to be a valley fold and then you're going to open it up and this one's going to be a valley fold so you have your mountain for the halfway mark and then you have two valleys or if you look at it this way it's two mountains and a valley maybe that's the best way to look at it so what we're going to do is this is going to be kind of like a z fold it's really kind of like a book bind fold z fold card so this panel is on top and i just want you to burnish these before we start the assembly now this layer one panel main panel layer one is going to get adhered to this top panel flush to the edge and flush to the top and bottom i'm going to use the simply scoring tool to aid me in attaching it so i'm going to open this up and I'm going to put adhesive on just this first panel right here. So I have adhesive. I wonder if you can see it on the camera here and here. I'm going to put this in the corner, hold on to it so it's up against this wall, up against that wall. I'm going to take this main panel layer one and I'm going to put it up against this wall until it hits the far wall and then let it hit this wall and then put it down so it gets attached just that panel and it's flush here flush here and it should be flush on the bottom if it's not take it to your paper trimmer and trim that so now we have that part done now what i'm going to do is take this out of the way we're going to go with the right panel this is the three by five and a quarter i'm going to adhere that to this inside panel of the card now the beauty, beauty of the video is you can pause it and rewind it if you are going to try to make this card. I think you're going to love how it turns out and you can use any stamped images, any color card stock, any designer series paper to recreate this. So I have this here. I'm going to close the card and attach this one to the front. So this is just closed like this for now and we're going to attach this one to the front. And I'm going to put um, equal spacing on the top, bottom, and this left side. And I failed to tell you that it's equal spacing top, 
right side and bottom here. So now we have that on the outside, this on the inside. We're gonna open this up and you can fold that down, but this short panel that's right by the half, the fold line of the card, this is the halfway line or the four and a quarter line. We're gonna put adhesive right here. And this is gonna really kind of create a book bind where it's adhered that together. So this is gonna be our fun fold. It's gonna be flat like this and opens up like this. Now I chose not to adhere all of this together first because I want this to get attached and then I want to put this piece on so it is flush across here, across here and equal spacing on the sides. So I like to make sure that I'm happy with how the panel gets put on all by itself before I put this one on. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'm going to line up these, these, get that straight, equal spacing here, and that should fall into place. That should all work out. Now for this third layer, I actually texturized that with the Timber 3D folder. I thought that worked perfect for the theme of this card with the trees. So I'm going to place this equal spacing on all sides and we're going to have about a sixteenth of an inch space on all sides there. Now the sentiment layer is for the inside and I have a max dimension here. What I'm going to do is just place this right here and that's just going to tell us, I'm going to turn it over, that's just going to tell us that we want to make sure our inside sentiment does not go beyond that. So if I just set that here, or I could take my bone folder and just put something there. So when you open it up, you visually see what space you have to work with. And now I'm going to place this kind of center, equal spacing on the top and bottom, equal spacing on the sides there. That's my inside sentiment. So it says it's two and a quarter max because we don't want it to be visible when you close your card. Okay, so this is what we're going to embellish this card with. I'm going to place this down here. I'm going to bring in my silicone craft mat and I want this tree to be adhered down with my seal and I want part of it to hang over the edge. So I wanna make sure that I don't put adhesive on this end. So I'm just gonna turn it over, put my adhesive here, put some on the tree trunk. Just make sure it's not sticking to the side. So I purposely did not put any here. So I can hang that over a little bit. This one I'm going to put on with dimensionals and I don't want any adhesive here. And I already put that on ahead of time. I have some mini dimensionals and some standard dimensionals. So I'm going to take my take your pick tool and get these all off. Just give some dimension to the second tree. And I'm gonna lower this one a little bit like here. And then I'm going to take this birthday greeting. I'm just going to adhere this and tuck it right in here and have it adhere right like so. And then what you can do, we have these on, some online exclusive product is these adhesive dragonflies and birds. I'm going to place one bird right here. So that is the fun fold card. I hope you like that. I think this product worked out really well and it stands really nice. So Envision, you'll see in the photos, Envision it will stand on a table or a mantle like that. It works out really nice. So for this image, I actually made the card ahead of time. I actually stamped another image on here and then I have these two trees. But I wanted to show you that it's the very same tree. What I did, let's see, I stamped the tree and then I cut the lower three groupings of branches off. I just went around here, I fussy cut these out. I'm just gonna real quickly do that. Trimmed a little bit cleaner around there and I just made shorter trees. 
to create those, I have these two popped up with dimensionals, and then I have an inside sentiment here and a couple of those birds. So I hope you enjoyed this fun fold project. And as I mentioned, you can go to my blog and get the PDF with the measurements. There are no written instructions. That's what this tutorial is for. So you can rewatch this. I was gonna quickly show you how I created the rubber band cluster. And I made these a long time ago. I've made, they don't last forever. They do kind of dry up and get brittle over, over time, but they'll last quite a bit long, uh, quite a while. And what you wanna do is just take them to the sink and rinse this off and let it dry. And um, you can change colors. So I, I take 30 of these. So they are a number 32 rubber band. And I take 30 of these. Hopefully this will go smoothly in the video. I haven't made one for a long time, so I picked up all this stuff at the Dollar Tree. I take these little tie, um, cable ties, and I used to do a variety of different things, wire and various things, but these cable ties work out really well. So I got 30 rubber bands here. I'm going to tighten this, and I like this to be underneath, like, down underneath it so um, it doesn't stick up here. You try to get underneath. So tighten that and then you want to cut this off with a utility scissors or uh, a cutter. Let's see. So cut that cable tie off. Then you're going to take another cable tie and bring these all together like this and then go around this tighten these and just tighten that as much as you can cut this off then i put a second one down here and hopefully i stayed on the camera sorry about that just take a second one here and i just like to helps get this all to be like a, I don't know, a tassel or more like a tassel than a pom-pom, I guess. And you can cut those off. You don't want to get, you don't want to get cut with those. You don't want them to be sharp. Now, when you have this, what you can do is go and cut all these loops. So you're going to cut all the loops. And actually, you probably don't even have to cut the loops. What you can do is just bring this together and cut these shorter. Just get them all even. And now you have your little cluster that you can add this beautiful texture to your stamped images. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. I would love to have you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And um, as I mentioned, you can find uh, the text in the text portion of this video, you can find a link to my blog post. I hope you enjoyed this fun fold. I'm going to be using it for some other projects in the upcoming days. So um, enjoy. Thanks for stopping by. Take care and happy creating.